Welcome to Nasir's Revision Channel. Please subscribe and like. Then we start our video. Today we are going to discuss the basics or the introduction. Call this the beginner's guide of someone who is doing research for the very first time. Let us look at today's objectives. Objective number one, we are going to define research, its characteristics, its purpose, why we need it, and the principles of research. Now, let's look at our first objective, where we are supposed to explain the concept of research. But before defining the term research, think about other terms or words that have the prefix re. For example, rebuild, repackage, rewrite, retake. You can give more examples. Now I would like to ask, what does re signify? I'm sure you have seen it signifies again, meaning that if you say rebuild, it means there was a building and now you are rebuilding again. That is the same case with research. When we look at research, just like the other words mentioned before, it has a prefix re. This prefix means again and again. It therefore means to do research is to search again and again. The next question we may need to ask is, what are we searching for? The simple answer to this question is that we are searching for knowledge. Then we also need to ask ourselves, why are we searching for knowledge? We are searching for knowledge to fill a gap between what is and what ought to be. Let's use this example. When it rains in Kampala, Kampala is filled with water. And remember we said we are searching for knowledge to fill a gap between what is. Therefore, the example we have given is the what is and what ought to be. What ought to be is what you would want to happen when it rains again. Therefore, when it rains again, you do not want floods. You want water to drain very well and roads are always possible, which means that is the what ought to be. Therefore, we are searching for knowledge to fill a gap between what is and what ought to be. Therefore, we have said that we are searching for knowledge to fill a gap between what is and what ought to be. I hope you have understood that statement using that example. And there, yeah, a simple question comes in. Do you recognize a problem from that example? What is this problem that we are talking about? In eyes of a researcher, a problem does not mean that things are going bad. But it is any situation that makes a researcher ask him or herself why. Therefore, even when things are going on well, the researcher is always going to ask why. Let's give an example. If a government has implemented a project in your area or in your community and there is high uptake of that project, you would want to find out why. Using the same example, imagine the same government has implemented a project in the same community and the uptake is very low. You may also want to ask the reasons why. Therefore, why means there is a gap that calls for investigation. In that investigation, that is research. Let's look at the examples again. We have said a problem does not mean that things are always going wrong or things are going bad. But it is any situation that makes a researcher ask him or herself why. We gave an example where we said if a government has implemented a project, let's say the government has distributed mosquito nets to a community and there is high uptake of the mosquito nets. That means you will be happy. But the researcher will ask, why is there high uptake of 
mosquito nets. Imagine the same government has implemented a project in the same community and the uptake is very low. Now a researcher will ask why? So we said a gap is the difference between the way things are and the way things ought to be. Therefore, a gap is now the research problem. The next question we need to ask ourselves is how do we find answers to these problems? Number one, we find answers by collecting data, analyzing data, writing a report and disseminating the findings to your audience. The answers to these problems is what research is all about. Now let's go to the definition of research. Different scholars define it differently, but they all bring out an idea that research is search for knowledge to fill a gap. If you've been attentive, you already understand when we say research is search for knowledge to fill a gap. You remember we say the gap is the research problem. In this session, we are going to define research as an objective, systematic, and scientific investigation of a problem through collection, analysis, and interpretation of data in order to gain understanding about a phenomena. In simple terms, research is the systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data to answer a certain question or solve a problem. The definition of research has new words that need to be explained. Let's start with a phenomena. A phenomena is an object of investigation. It is what the researcher is interested in investigating. For example, a program a researcher might be interested in researching about a policy or maybe a school or an institution or maybe an organization. You can give very many other examples. Another term we saw in the definition is systematic. And systematic implies that research is developed and presented in a coherent manner. It follows laid out procedures. Another term we saw in the definition is scientific investigation. This implies that the research process is conducted carefully following specific steps and with specific objectives to solve the problem under consideration and findings that are based on investigations. Another new word we need to define in the definition of research is objective, which means that the research findings are not influenced by personal feelings, personal opinions, or attitudes. They are reported as they are or as you have found them in the field. Therefore, when we define research again, we define research as an objective, systematic, and scientific investigation of a problem through collection, analysis, and interpretation of data in order to gain understanding about a phenomena. Now let's look at the characteristics of research. Number one, it should be specific and it should have a purpose. This is the reason you're doing research in the first place, because you have a problem that you're trying to look for answers for. Number two, empirical. Research is based on observation and measurement of phenomena, which means that the research that you are carrying out is based on real life experiences. If the topic is about problems related to immunization, it means immunization is taking place. Number three, testability. This means that your research can be testable and you have to make sure that it is not too hard or too difficult to measure. Number four, replicability. You have already seen this. It also has the prefix re, which means the results of the research should be supported again and again. Number five, precision and confidence. Precision means how exact are you? Then confidence is the probability that our estimates are correct. 
and in nursing, our confidence level should be at least 95%. Remember, you are dealing with human beings. Number six, objectivity. Our results should be objective based on facts resulting from actual data. Just like how we talked about characteristic number two, empirical, where the results are supposed to be based on real life experiences. Number seven, generalizability. This refers to the scope of applicability of the research findings. The wider the range of applicability of the solutions that you generated, that means the more useful the research is going to be. Number eight, parsimony. This means that since research is a scientific investigation, it does not mean that everything should be complicated. Therefore, parsimony is referring to the simplicity of explaining the phenomena that occurs in the application of solutions to the problem. Number nine, high ethical standards should be applied. Remember, as a nurse, you are dealing with human beings. Therefore, you should conduct your research with high regard to the privacy of your respondents. Then number 10, it is problem driven. That we have talked about this during the definition. Research is supposed to be conducted because there is a problem, not because it is just a thought or hearsay. It means research is problem driven. That was another objective which we're supposed to cover. Our next objective is understanding the purpose of research. The sole purpose of research is to explore, describe, and explain phenomena. What do we mean? Explore addresses the what question. For example, what are the potential risk factors of cancer development? Describe addresses the who, what, when, and where question. For example, who is affected? What characteristic do they present with? When did it start? Where is it affecting? Explain focuses on why question. For example, why does a specific treatment result in better outcome for patients with a particular condition? So those are the purposes of research. Explore, describe, and explain. Now let's look at our last objective of today, where we need to cover the needs for research in nursing. Number one, molding attitudes competence and skills because research helps nurses develop the right attitudes, improve their competence and enhance their technical skills because we have realized that research is a practical subject. Number two, filling knowledge and practice gaps. Research identifies areas where knowledge and practice may be lacking or outdated. For example, through research, Nurses can discover new evidence-based interventions. Let's talk about a relatable example like malaria. If there was no research, treatment of malaria would still be chloroquine. Number three, fostering commitment and accountability to clients. Because when you investigate the patient's outcomes and their experiences in the hospital, you can better understand the impact of your interventions. That means your fostering commitment and accountability to your patients. Number four, providing a basis for professionalism. Because research provides a foundation for professionalism in nursing. For example, when you study the ethical dilemmas faced by nurses, for example, stealing drugs, you understand the consequences of such a person, which means Research is helping with providing a foundation for professionalism in nursing. Number five, providing a basis for professional accountability. This is the same thing as the need for research. Number three, where we foster commitment and accountability. Then number six, we identify the role of a nurse in the changing society. For example, studying the impact of nurse-led initiatives in promoting community health can showcase the valuable contributions nurses make beyond traditional hospital settings. Number seven, discovering new measures for nursing practice. For example, exploring the use of technology in remote patient monitoring can revolutionize the way nurses provide care and improve patient outcomes. Number eight, assisting administration in making prompt decisions. 
For example, researching the impact of nurse staffing ratios can help health organizations determine optimal staffing levels for maintaining patient safety and quality of care. Number nine, improving standards in nursing education. This one is self-explanatory. For example, UNIMEP always carries out research to always update the curricula. Then number 10, refining existing theories and discovering new theories. For example, studying the experience of patients with chronic illnesses can lead to the development of theories that guide nursing interventions and improve patient outcome. So you realize that we use research in nursing because we need to update ourselves with new information and relate it to the previous information. Now let's look at our last objective of today where we need to cover the principles of a good research. The first principle, a good research should clearly state the purpose of the research. The second principle is that you're supposed to get consent from your respondents. Another principle is you need to use the appropriate methodology. We shall cover methodologies later. Then number four, you're supposed to have an unbiased approach. If you have been attentive, you realize that you have covered most of these things. Number five, a good research is supposed to have sufficient resources. Number six, someone who is carrying out research is supposed to be trained. And that is the reason you're studying theory first before you can go into the field. Number seven, you are supposed to understand the subject area. For example, if your research is about mental patients, that means you're supposed to have studied mental health. Principle number eight, you're supposed to have experience. This is the same thing with understanding the subject area. Principle number nine, you're supposed to adhere to ethical guidelines. We have already talked about this because you are dealing with people and you have to make sure that your research does not cause harm or discomfort to the individuals involved. We have come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you have gotten an introduction or a foundation of research and in case you're still here, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it among your friends. We we'll meet again. Bye.